Uh, greetings and welcome to our final showcase video for the mod Tomorrow Naughty Madness. Taking a look at the uh, mod submitted for the last round of the competition. And if it is unfamiliar with Tomorrow Naughty Madness, it's one of our annual modding competitions. Uh, similar to the May Modathon, only team based with uh, specific themes, as decreed by our Lord Sheogorath. And if for the last round of the competition, which technically ended 15 days ago, uh, each of the teams had to submit a mod that combined an ocean and seafaring mod with a uh, Thief Saw mod. And if four teams have submitted mods for just that, all but using a generous definition of the term mods. And as you might expect, after two months of non stop modding, uh, the teams were uh, pretty burnt out by this round, so there's not as many impressive mods for this round of the competition. Uh, next year we might, uh, you know, try changing the uh, timetable a little bit so things don't drag on quite as much. But uh, anyway, you'll find out the links for all the uh, submitted mods down below. So let's get started, shall we? And uh, we're first going to be taking a look at Pearls and Pirates by Team Ethical Beasts. And uh, this one starts out with a rather scenic and detailed shack just outside the village of Talmora. Uh, kind of just uh, sitting along the coast here. And this shack belongs to a pearl farmer. Uh, who uses the uh, docks here to fish out coal ops and gather pearls to craft into various items. Uh, to be sold to random passerbys. It's uh, certainly a rather charming and quaint location, and it fits in well with the Azura's Coast region. But uh, heading on inside, you'll find a, perhaps a bit bare, at least at first anyway, shack. As you'll see later on, the uh, shack interior here actually updates as you do quests for this fellow, who needs a bit of help stocking his shop. And uh, he's pretty much obsessed with pearls. Uh, green pearls, blue pearls, red pearls, really any kind of pearl. And uh, he's trying to expand his business by offering more uh, pearl-related products for sale. And uh, that's where you come in. Uh, you'll be doing a few fetch quests for this pearl farmer, getting various objects that you need to craft new items for sale. Uh, starting out oddly enough with lamps, uh, one of which you're going to probably need to steal from someone in town. And as you help this mission out, uh, you'll graduate from uh, retrieving lamps to getting various amulets, rings, balls, and other odd miscellaneous items. Uh, some of which you can buy from traitors, and others of which you'll need to steal first. And as you do these quests, the shop will update with new items that you can purchase. And there's a ton of really cool looking handcrafted pearl objects that have been added by this mod, including even a few pearl related weapons. And not only that, but there's also a quest to track down a pirate ship, and to find a legendary treasure. But we won't be showing that off here so as to, you know, avoid spoilers and all that. And next up we have um, a Zine Tree Born by Team Welsh Wizards, and yes I know I butchered the pronunciation there. I really have no idea how you even uh, begin to pronounce Doom Ruin names, but uh, anyway. Uh, this is kind of a continuation of Rubberman's Swimmer Rebirth project, which has started out with the uh, Team Swimmer mod submission for Round 2, the uh, Deepwatch Abyss, and has since grown into a rather massive overhaul of seemingly all the uh, Duma Ruins on Vardenfell. Uh, this particular mod focuses on the island Duma Ruin in the Azur's Coast region, uh, just in a little ways south and east of the city of Saran. And one of the aims of the Duma Rebirth project is to sort of make the uh, Duma Ruins of Morrowind a lot more like the uh, Duma Ruins of Skyrim, at least in terms of detailing and atmosphere anyway. Since I have to admit that uh, Skyrim's Ruin Dungeons were a bit more atmospheric than their uh, Morrowind counterparts, even if it came at the cost of sacrificing some of the more, uh, you know, uh, unique aspects of Doom building design. And I have to hand it to uh, Rubberman, his Doom Dungeon overhauls so far have been incredibly atmospheric and detailed, using dozens of new assets that he's developed for this project, and including more puzzles and interactive elements in his uh, dungeon redesigns, so it requires a bit more effort to uh, loot these uh, Doom Ruins. And at least when compared with their uh, vanilla counterparts anyway. And uh, while Morrowind Mighty Madness is coming to an end, it's uh, pretty exciting to see that uh, Rubberman's uh, Dual Rebirth project will continue onwards, uh, covering more ruins and dungeons in the future, with Morrowind Rebirth compatibility for those who use Transfaster's Overhaul mod. And already Rubberman has released, I think it's uh, 4 or 5 uh, dungeon overhauls so far, uh, including this one of course, and they're available both as standalone downloads and as a compilation download. And uh, hopefully we'll see many more going into the future. Uh, personally, I quite like the uh, design and layout of these ruins. Though they certainly won't be to uh, everyone's taste. And uh, not everyone wants a Skyrim styled mod in Morrowind after all. But uh, still what's here is quite impressive and worth checking out. For our third mod in today's lineup, we have the unfinished alpha, Doris Kaeth by Team Dreamy Dramora. And uh, this was arguably a far too ambitious mod to seriously attempt in just two weeks time. Uh, basically adding a sort of hidden underground uh, pirate town to the Azura's Coast region, with an outdoor hidden cove that you can see here. Uh, there's certainly quite a bit of impressive work that went into building what you can see here in this mod, with a new land models that are designed to uh, blend in with the landscape, and some really interesting designs. But uh, you won't find any NPCs or quests here, as the uh, team ran out of time before uh, getting that far. And uh, notably, the uh, ships here also don't have interiors, so it is still very much an alpha. And uh, while that might be a bit disappointing to hear, 
what's available in this mod is just, you know, really quite impressive and scenic. And we're going to spend just a bit of time just uh, flying around in this pirate town here, just to uh, show off what the uh, team did manage to build in the time allotted. Uh, Dorskaith is a sizable settlement, about 9 to uh, 10 shacks in a way in a uh, cavern cove here, which is quite naturally a bit on the dark side. And uh, the shacks here are just built in along the cliffs around the uh, central harbour. And uh, you can just imagine that this would be the perfect hiding place and cove for a pirate settlement. Our uh, ships could just uh, dock in here when trying to avoid Imperial patrols. And to relish in the opportunity to uh, spend their hard-earned booty on the uh, street merchants or at the uh, tavern. And you know, gosh, I just, I really love the uh, design here. Especially with the atmospheric lighting and detailing. Our uh, Greatness 7 really uh, outdid himself the uh, creation of this beautifully scenic interior which I note does have a fair bit of verticality in the design, which is just a nice little cherry on top here. And I can only hope that the uh, team will push forward, now that the uh, competition is over, and to actually finish this extremely promising looking mod. It would be an absolute travesty to let such an interesting and unique concept fall to the wayside unfinished. But uh, anyway, I did just want to uh, take a bit of a closer look at the uh, town environment here. So just going to walk along the uh, gangplanks and shack ridden streets here, uh, just to get a better eye of the uh, detailing that Greatness 7 has done here. And at the risk of repeating myself, I just, you know, love everything about this interior. I don't think I've ever seen a more natural and atmospheric set of cavern chambers before. Uh, the detail in here is just mind-blowing. And this would make a fantastic setting for some epic quest line or a new faction. And uh, perhaps one day, it'll be just that, assuming no one deletes it from the Nexus anyway. Uh, you know who you are. And I've got my eyes on you, so there better not be any more mod deleting, capiche? And anyway, while this mod is hardly in a playable state, it is at least worth looking at for the amazing level of detailing it uh, contains here. And uh, just moving right along to our last one, we have, and I can't believe I have to cover this, Kill That Crab by Team Horny Skulls. And in this mod, you get to kill a crab, and really, that's it. That's the whole thing. The crab is supposed to represent the uh, Drunken Mud Crab, a member of Team Dreamy Dramora, one of Horny Skulls' rivals. And yes, this is just a joke mod. There's also some mildly offensive language and outdated internet slang, but this is pretty much it. And really, normally I wouldn't cover a mod like this, but alas, the team found a loophole. Since I'm contractually obligated to showcase every submitted mod for the competition, uh, so long as it doesn't blatantly uh, break any content rules, I have to showcase it for this video. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this showcase video. Uh, really not much more to add here. And obviously the teams were, again, pretty burnt out by this uh, round of the competition. So I'll see about uh, revising the competition for next year. And in the meantime, you can find down the links for all the mods shown down in the video description below. So thanks for watching, and a special thanks goes out to all the teams for an interesting competition this year.